Hello, I'm Timothy Hobbs, and today I'm going to be doing another session of uh, live streaming for veganbuddies.org. And what I was working on a couple of weeks ago before I had a delay was the Matrix bot that would allow you to look up users by their location. And this bot is going to be used by the mobile app to find out which vegan buddies are near the user. So I need to open up Emacs here. It's very, uh, I, one of the reasons for the delay is that I had some real challenges with my computer getting too slow when I was doing the live stream. And what I needed to do was I went and bought a video capture card, which I plug into HDMI and I reroute it through the capture card to a second laptop. And then the second laptop does the streaming and the encoding because apparently encoding is very challenging for CPUs. And then I do the programming on the primary laptop. And that took me about two weeks to set up. Uh, so that's two weeks of the delay. And the other two weeks of the delay is that I was overwhelmed with difficulties that I've been having remodeling my house and also a little bit distracted by the stupid war. Uh, so I've got the two laptops set up and what I found is that having the two screens moving slightly out of sync with each other is extremely distracting. And so I need to go and uh, turn off this one laptop screen or maybe just minimize the OBS window so I don't get distracted by that and I can look at this other window. I, I guess it's actually even distracting just to have this screen shining at me. So I'll turn off the screen. So now I can get started. I have Emacs open and I do not remember where exactly I was, to be honest. It's been, as I said, a couple of weeks. So here I am, vegan buddies and the matrix graphical user index is the bot name that I was using. And what I do whenever I'm really confused and distracted is I open up the thing and I do, well, I guess it wants me to open up Docker is I do cargo test and I see where I am. And it says could not find cargo.toml in the, okay, here. And we'll see what happens <laughs> to find out what is going on. So it builds, I guess it doesn't do anything yet. And it says zero tests. So uh, need to zoom in a bit. And I guess Do I have any code at all? I have a main fun function that does nothing. It runs.
So it does build and it can display the help message. I don't see any code anywhere though. I remember what I was doing. I was trying to get diesel to work properly. So I have this diesel.toml uh, file. And what I was trying to figure out is how to get it so that there was a database, a Postgres database running, because I want to store the users in this Postgres database. So I have this empty migrations folder and what I need to do is I need to open up Firefox and go to diesel RS. Mm, maybe if I restore the session, I hope that's safe. Uh, I'll just have to look it up. So here we have diesel and I was going to go through the get started guide and figure out how to get the database set up. I don't know if I had Postgres set up yet. That would be a good thing to look into. So if I go to uh, Docker Compose, I do have Postgres and the Postgres user is vbuff or vegan buddies. The password is foobar. And I guess I don't have any databases created yet. And Mm. So coming back here, I'm supposed to do diesel setup. I think I already did that. One thing I'm not clear on is when I'm live streaming and I start to download a big file, does this stream cut, like cut out because like I don't have enough bandwidth? Already I know that I'm like really restrained. I don't have enough bandwidth to do the live streaming. Maybe I should figure out a way to get it so that the laptop that's streaming is on a different network than the laptop that's coding. Uh-huh, I need to install diesel CLI. 
Mm. Maybe that's what I was caught up on last time. I seem to recall some problem with it. Like that it needed some dependencies that weren't in uh, Alpine Linux. And so I had to change my Docker container to Debian rather than Alpine. That, I remember that, that I had that problem that I was running an Alpine Linux Rust container and I switched to Buster hoping that this would work. That doesn't seem very nice. Car seg fault. This is rust and it just seg faulted. Mm-hmm. I don't actually even know. Uh, I don't even know how to debug this. I, I, I've been developing in Python for the last couple of years and Python does not segfault. Like, I guess it could theoretically segfault, but I don't remember the last time uh, Python segfaulted. So a seg fault is when your program tries to access an area of memory that it's not allowed to, and it shouldn't be able to do that in Rust, but I know that this isn't just clean Rust, it's using some foreign function interfaces. So it's probably got a lot of unsafe code. And So it says that you try to access a null pointer, uh, out of bounds pointer, uh, incorrect assignment to a pointer, or uh, writing to read only memory, and So there's two possibilities here. There's unsafe code or Rust compiler has a bug. And I'm going to go with one because I just kind of trust the Rust compiler, even though I probably shouldn't. And they say, I have a program that grabs a stack trace 
अहा आई सी दस सो जस्ट टू बी क्लियर इट डज सेग फाइट एवरी सिंगल टाइम आई रन इट विच इज गुड इट्स रिप्रोड्यूसेबल एंड I started out by putting in a, a lot of print statements to figure out where the sig fault was. Uh that doesn't sound like a good idea. Um So Valgrind gives you a whole bunch of non- random garbage and uh will eventually tell you where the error is. So I guess maybe I'll start by doing Google or Kagi or however you want to call it. Diesel set up seg faults. Ah, it seems like I'm not the first person to have this problem. It's even closed. Why is it closed if it's still coming around in 2020 and these are from 2020 or 2022 and these are from 2020? maybe i should switch to the skip to the end like when you're reading a mont novel incorrectly where and was it closed and why Thanks for debugging this. This sounds like 813 then as this is then clearly not a diesel issue anymore. I will close this issue as not our bug. For anyone hitting this, I think the best work around is to build the current libpq plus open ssl version in your docker container by yourself. What the fuck? Okay, so that is an insane thing to suggest. Um
Still no solution. Okay, so what exactly um, are we running here? Cat. We're still on Alpine. Okay, so. I think that the best thing to try is since the person said that switching from Alpine to Buster fixed it, I'll do um, just that. I'll switch to Buster. And obviously these will change, but what can I do if this is like some kind of... Okay, so I can always just get checkout to go back. I didn't need to like add something to my undo buffer. And now I can do docker compose down and rebuild it uh-huh this is very annoying. I need to find a better way of doing this. What I'm going to do right now is I'm creating a DB directory in the source directory. And the DB directory is where the Postgres database is stored. And the difficulty is that then Docker build packages up the build... Mm, context and sends it over and that build context can't be read if the db directory is owned by the postgres user and even though i have db in my docker ignore file it's not getting ignored i'm just going to go ahead and look if docker ignore doesn't um, dot docker ignore it seems like it's spelled correctly mm -hmm. yeah that looks spelled correctly What's going on? Where's Emacs? Did I close Emacs somehow accidentally? And where's my switcher? Okay, so PU vegan buddies dot dot docker ignore what if i switch change it to that and change it to db and change it to dot db dot i don't even know like is docker ignore just completely broken mm.
It just tells you to CH own things, but that's not the correct answer. Okay, so they say that ignore everything and then make an exception for the directories that you want to include. So I'm going to go ahead and try that since I'm desperate. It still doesn't li like me. Wait, I needed to do like that. Um. Presume this isn't going to work. No, it gives me the same. This is just a bug. Why am I wasting time trying to figure out? Interestingly, they have the same problem that they're storing the DB in the same directory. And. It's open. Okay, let's scroll forward a couple of years. Okay, so this is just never going to be fixed, I see. Um, I don't know if there's a point in having a Docker ignore file. I guess I'll do what the go person suggests in case it's ever actually fixed and Does Docker Compose have the ability to set a specific subdirectory for the <clears throat> Uh huh, I forgot I have to use the make file too. Um For the build context, like set the build context. It was weird.
Ah, it actually is already right here. So if I change that to SRC, that might help. And then I will go ahead and do git maker SRC git move matrix git mv okay git mv fluffy chat src and now if i do make docker compose Did I make a typo? Yes. Unable to prepare the context, unable to evaluate symflinks in Docker file path. Uh huh. Mm. Now I'm really confused. I'm super confused. I have no idea. No rule to make target Docker field file needed by Docker compiler. So if I have the Docker files in both places, now that's really weird. Okay, so. So if I have it in both places, it works. If I have it in only one of them, it doesn't. So I have the do I have to have the Docker file in both the root directory and the SRC directory. And if it's in only the SRC directory, it says unable to evaluate symlinks in Docker file path. I'm not sure what same link they're talking about. Building user index. Um, <laughs> okay, so here they have this uh, well here I have a service called user index and so what I really want to be doing is I want to be uh, I want to I don't even want to include in my docker in my context uh, so I'm gonna go ahead I only want to include the matrix bot in that context
And so I'm going to go ahead and get MV things back to where they were. And now I can make it so that the matrix geographic user index is the context and I'll put that Docker file there and I'll have one geographic uh, user index and I'll have one Docker file per service or per thing that I'm creating. Git MV Docker file matrix okay and now I don't ex Now I'm really confused again. As to what's going on. Try like that. Of course, this is a problem with the make file actually. coming from and now it's going to complain that those those libraries aren't in Debian and I need to find the equivalent libraries in Debian and so I need to go and go to Debian package search packages.debian.org and try to figure out how to search this website it's really difficult to figure that out like open if I do this, it searches in like articles. It's the website search. So how do I get the, the uh, maybe this and open. Uh, Buster. I'm going to try just without the dev then. Docker file. And now we'll try the Maybe this will have some dependency that I can look for. <laughs> libgtk3 and is there libgtk4 similar packages libgtk4 
So I'm going to try that one. And then libpq. So I can look at the GHC thing and see what it's pulling in. libpq dev, so that is actually named the same thing as it was. Okay, so we can try building again. It does not like libgdk 4.0, and that does not make sense to me. Why doesn't it like it? I just copied and pasted it. Uh-huh, it's not in Buster. So I'm going to try 3.0. I don't even know why I need the libgdk, to be honest. But I remember I needed it to build something in the... Oh, I needed a G object. That's what I needed. I needed G object. And now... libgtk30 isn't buster though getting dark. Um, so something called, uh, wait. So this actually is failing because when I run add user, it wants a bunch more information. And actually Debian uses user add by default and um, so I'm going to go and look at how this is done in the Pratsanakala. It's somewhere mono repo, docker base image, docker file, and where is the add user line? 
Maybe I'll find it in Club Chapel. I just remembered that, uh-huh, I have this here, RUID. Okay, so I've updated that already. And now I can try building again. Hopefully it'll use cached layers and it won't rebuild all of those packages I just installed. Yes, at least that. Cannot access home test, no such file or directory. Um, And now I need to change, wait, I don't actually know how, I, I'm not gonna need to mess with this right now. Just going to try, um, so diesel CLI is not currently installed, bash. So that's not installed right now, that's weird, like, how do I make that persist? I need to make that persist somehow. But right now I'm just going to try installing diesel again and seeing if I get that seg fault. Okay, so it's installed and now I will do uh, diesel setup. Uh huh, matrix diesels. Mm-hmm. Where is it pulling that from? I need to hide the preview here. Uh, I was checking to see if there anybody wrote anything in the chat, and they did, but a long time ago. 
and now I can go ahead and echo. Hmm. It says database URL. So I don't have that set. Maybe that's a typo and dot e n v post grass. And now diesel setup runs and it creates the diesel demo database. Excellent. And diesel migration generate. I'm just going to follow this directly to make sure that everything's working and then I'll delete the database and I will start from scratch. And Wait, I need to delete this comment and down drop table posts. Diesel migration. So I, I now created my first migration and so I have a table posts and now I can start working on actually interacting with the database but actually I'm not going to continue with the tutorial right now I'm going to uh, write code I'm going to change it so my migration actually creates the tables that I want and the tables that I want is a table for list, uh, a list of users, a list of reviews and uh, I forget what the what the third table was it's written somewhere in the readme I believe so user index, user table test result table and rating table so the users will have their latitude and longitude. They'll be able to take tests to prove that they know what they're talking about, that they know how much vitamin B12 a person should have each day. And other users will be able to rate users. And so um, we'll start by just creating the user table. And uh, we'll do that next week because I'm out of time. So I'm going to wrap up now. Uh, next week, I will be doing this live stream again at, on Tuesday at 6 p.m., hopefully, and uh, I'll see you then.